very first afternoon of the year. It always takes me, even even if it's not the first afternoon, it takes me time to get all my stuff organized, but now it really does. Last year I got in the tree and I reached in my pocket and I found a hoochie mama and I found all my elk calls still in my vest. Well, I just took all mine out at the house <laughs> early this morning. Doesn't it feel great to be back in oh, my mouth and had a great elk season and now we get to chase whitetails which is our true what we really what we love it all but it is chasing whitetails is always good i think i got i hope we ain't got to chase them far tonight well i've got what i need i'm gonna go load this in the truck did you tell jimmy we was here today mm -mm. uh-uh will doesn't know either well will does but he had not know it didn't matter no we'll tell we'll let will uh jimmy know take some um let's take pictures of the stands where we are with our phones oh and send jimmy and we'll send it to him tonight <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> oh, you'll love that. I know it's killing him though. Oh, you know it. Hello, I'm Wilbur Primos. All these hunts are exactly as they happen. There's no fancy edits, there's no stage scenes. The calling you're going to hear is excited calling. But all these hunts are as they actually happen. And that's why we call it the truth about hunting. When the truth began in 1987, we had no idea where this journey would take us. 30 years later, we're still having fun. Welcome to Primo's Truth About Honey. Primo's Truth About Hunting is brought to you by Bushnell, Savage, Federal, Matthews Archery, Rage, Mossy Oak, Squincher, Polaris, and Primo's Honey Speak the Language. Where are you going this evening, B? There's I'm, a that's a stupid question, ain't it? Well, no, that little, that little food, the bucket patch, we got a stand set up back behind it. It's a ridge back there the where they side. cut timber off. It's full of dewberry where they bed. Yeah, there ain't no food plot there, but there's persimmon trees all in that in that country. And if we can, with this southeast wind, I think it might work. Southeast, can I hunt there on the yeah. southeast? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna go back to trust the old pawpaw -paw patch. Okay. Can't beat it. It's tree different there. this year. You know, we let it grow up. We didn't plant it. We didn't disc it. It's Johnson grass that high, and that tree is just, it looks like a broken umbrella. It's got some persimmons are so big, they look like look. Look at apples. No matter what we see, we're going to call Jimmy. We're going to find a picture online of something big. And just send it to him. Yeah. Just, just be sure to take plenty of pictures, and we can bombard him with pictures tonight. Yeah, click, click a bunch of selfies in the stand. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to go in, the, in this ranger here because so right. you're not going to use it. No, I'll take the big one. Ozonics go and that thing is whisper quiet. Those guys did an incredible job with that technology and figuring it out, but I wish they would figure out how to turn those things into an air condition. It is 87 degrees today and we are bow hunting and this tree is so full of persimmons. But the neat thing is, is we got one persimmon tree there, we got this one, and then another one right across the food plot where this is a popo patch. Um, it was a food plot last year, but this year we let it grow up. We let the Johnson grass grow up in it because we wanted to be able to get in here and let the deer feel safe coming to this spot, especially out here with this persimmon tree here. So we let it grow up. It's tall. It's nasty. But we're hoping that these deer are hungry for persimmons. That's the only thing we can hope for, especially this time of the year. It took us about an hour to get in here. We took our time. It's going to be hard to tell, but I kind of explained the setup. If you look to my left, it kind of falls off. To my right, falls off. It's a ridge. Now, a ridge here in the river bottoms might only be three or four foot elevation difference. The thick, the thickets kind of come together right where we are. We got one persimmetry out there pretty far. Got another one here, and we got several of them behind us. So, all these deer are coming right around the edge down this ridge. The persimmetries are dropping like crazy. So, we're in here tight on them. October. Maybe we picked the right spot. If not, hopefully Troy and B 
bendies. They point stand right there in the grass. Walking home, they finally got enough percentage. When you can sit around and watch two bugs like that, and some smaller bugs and a couple of does just walk around and feed and come under the tree and eat persimmons and watch them do their thing without even knowing you in the world. I consider that a very, very good afternoon in my book. came out right here. Just like it's supposed to. Big stuff. Oh, can't be! Can't be! She said you want some fresh on. Um, Man, you know that she come in there she was you know, she, she she never saw us, but she knew something wasn't right and she was just spooky. I told Lake, I said you better get on her. Well if she was spooky, she probably saw Lake. Right? <laughs> no, she, if you'd have seen anything, she would have been gone. Hey, there's no better time of the year to shoot for it, I'm sorry to tell you. She is just a sweet, trying to get drawn on her and get moving around her. And this segment of The Truth is brought to you by Height Spot Quivers, Black Gold, and Ripcord. It's a beautiful sunrise over the Mississippi River this morning here at Cottonmouth as we join Brad and Lake, who've been in the tree since well before daylight. Well, finally got light enough to see. Lake and I have been here for a while. Got the river straight east of us. Got a southeast wind blowing like this, cutting across. Got those hikes going on over both of us too, so we got four persimmon trees right here. We got them from 15 yards to 40 yards. I mean, they have been dropping like crazy all morning. We've been sitting here just doing She's coming right out there, she's about 80 yards. It isn't long before Brad spots a big doe headed his way. You, I'm sure you've hunted on persimmons before. But to, if you're a new bow hunter, that is that is a great, great fruit. 
mass crop to key in on in October. I mean, you can see the ground is literally just dust under this tree where they spend so much time here. <clears throat> you got a lot of old sign forests, piles, deer piles, old, new, fresh. It's just they're keyed in on this. And if you, if you don't know what a persimmon tree is, they have a real deep bark pattern, a real, real dark tree. One of the, when you, they really stand out because they're almost black from a distance. You can see them, but I mean, this is just tore up. That's something pretty cool, though. That's a, shot a lot of deer with persimmons. All us bow hunters have. Always, always fun to find a persimmon tree drop. Look on this doe right here. Went in right behind the shoulder, exactly where I was aiming. Well. I was aiming actually a little lower than that, but I'm gonna show you something. Came out here higher than it went in, and I'm shooting from a tree stand. This doe, if you when I drew back, she heard a little something when I drew, she she was alert. So when I shot, she was ducking and rolling. That's why the air came out higher than it went in. Think about that. She's going down and doing that. So the air went in here and it came out higher. So always on does, when they're alert, aim low. What a fun morning to move back to the edge of the road and head on to the skin shed. Always fun to go to the skin shed. My plans are to come in here, put some trail cameras up and see exactly what's really coming in here. The spot I want to hang a trail camera in does not have any big enough trees. So, thanks to the flood of last year, it left a bunch of driftwood laying around. So I'm gonna lay, put this camera right on this driftwood. There's 80 acres of beans here, but they always wanna come to the corners and walk the edge and you watch it as the season progresses, they'll eat the beans up against the edge first and then they walk their way out into the middle of the field. So. I think we'll be okay right there, Lake, don't you? Yes, sir. I don't think nothing will shake it. I think it'll be fine. Whoop. There he is. Right there. 501. You can smooth kick a field goal through them brow tines right there. Well, I had two choices on where I wanted to hunt this afternoon. One of them was here, and one of them was another spot based on the wind that we had this afternoon. Hmm. Let me think about it a minute. I thought about it, I'm going here. <laughs> That's my minute of thinking. Golly. Man, we're gonna call him Goalpost. That's his name, old Goldie. was in a boat and the water was about this deep about 18 20 feet we came driving by right here we were kind of nervous about the wind but we got in here and it's absolutely perfect it's kind of north northeast which is blowing it perfectly back that way seeing that proof cam picture of him standing right there at eight yards at 501 kind of sealed the deal so there's two other bugs that they've seen in here another nine point another big eight I just got brow ties okay, out. No, there's the big one. There's the big one. The big one just came out. Yeah, I might shoot you. All we can do is pray that they walk this way.
I'm sitting here right now with my phone on so you can see me looking at three shooter bucks. And I'm looking at a full moon coming up to the east. And to watch these deer would do what they do, all I can say is, golly, what an afternoon. Closed captioning for the truth provided by Final Approach. This segment of the truth is brought to you by Ozonics, Yeti, and Ceasefire. The big barges are moving up and down the river this morning as the sun rises over Cottonmouth. Brad is back in the tree, right on the edge of the river, while Troy is in the middle of a persimmon thicket. There's a spot I hunted the other afternoon. There's one persimmon tree there and another one over here, so they kind of go back and forth in a triangle. I would be tickled to kill a buck this morning, but if a big old Annie Doe walks up, I'll show take it. They're wearing the persimmons out. It's a hot spot. Great wind. Actually, three coming from the left, looks like. Shoot through. You see the ladder stand that I was in. 
If you look right here, the amount of cover, one single persimmon tree, but it splits. I can't believe she made it this far. Right there, buddy. There she is. Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was kind of getting a little, a little jealous old Brad Ferris there. He was getting to put that old Matthews to the test. I heard her crash right in here somewhere. You know, she was 29, 30 yards, and when I, where I was aiming, was at her heart. That way, aim right here, and if she ducks eight, ten inches or so, you know you're still you're still up in the up in the lungs right here. So we'll get her out of here and go meet up with Troy. It's always great to come to the skinning shed and have you one to hang up. But it's pretending over there falling like crazy. She's pretty good size. You need some iron and broadhead? <laughs> huh? No, it's a fun morning. We did. We saw a little buck. Does a bunch of yearlings. We probably we had ten or twelve deer on us at one time. Really? We did run everywhere, and there was there was two does come in without yearlings. And uh, she won up. She was one of them. Good job, buddy. Thank you, my man. 